Jesse, welcome. I'm sure you got a Coleman story or two for me through Ted, who worked with him forever. Give me a good one. You got anything comes to mind right out of, uh, right out of, right out of uh, the gate or no? Let me hear. I, I mean, when I, when I think about Jerry Coleman, I, I think about what all the fans talk about, which is that he's just this beloved figure. And uh, very rarely in sports or life, I guess, does anybody have a, a unanimous sort of approval rating? And, and he seems to with Padre fans. And, and it's kind of neat because that feels like it ties into today a little bit. Also, that's how they feel about Fernando Tatis Jr. And it's sort of, you know, as announcers, we are this bridge to the field for the fans. And I, I think Jerry did a marvelous job of that for so long, you know, making everybody come alive in the imaginations of the fans uh, when they didn't have the access to the players. And uh, people just love this man so much. And he was such a big part of the community here. Uh, his military background, obviously, uh, a big part of it with this being such a big Navy town and military town and, and what he was able to do leaving twice, you know, Major League Baseball to go into active duty. It's, it's a remarkable thing. As you said, the World Series with the Yankees. Uh, he's just a, an incredible figure. we got a statue of him at Petco Park. We broadcast from the Jerry Coleman Broadcast Center at the ballpark and uh, just one of those larger than life figures uh, then, now, and, and probably uh, forever. And again, that makes me think of Fernando also. Yeah, I don't know when, I don't know who started, though, the Padre games in 60, was it 69? They began or 68. But uh, 72 for Jerry. He, in, a, in essence, carried all those fans through that first 30 years, first 12 years before they won. He was their voice of baseball in Southern California, so I can understand why he's so significant. Now they're going to have Tatis for the next 15, 17 years. So uh, no football in San Diego right now. This is their big deal, beautiful ballpark. Tatis is part of the uh, deal for a long period of time. This is a tremendous contract for him, great contract by the Padres. And I think this is a big day here for San Diego, knowing that they have their best shortstop there for the next 13 years. It's a celebration day there in Southern California. Thoughts there? Go ahead. Yeah, I think you nailed it. It's a celebration, I mean, and it should be. This is going to go down as one of the most significant moments in franchise history. You know, when he put that pen to the paper, I think it's solidified that the next several generations of Padre fans are going to be interested. And isn't that the most important thing ever? And obviously, you know, it's a, it's a checkered past here in San Diego in terms of on-field performance, in terms of uh, the way ownership handled things. But the Padres got their hands on this guy, and now they're not going to let him go. And that is just something that can't be overstated, nor can the, the love affair. I think that exists between the fans and this player and this player and the fans. It goes both directions. It is significant. It is an awful lot of fun to sort of be uh, a guy with a front row seat to the whole thing. And, and again, this is, I'm not overstating it. This ain't her, this is not her hyperbole. Like this is one of the biggest days in Padre history. Wow. Now listen, they have proven on two occasions, 98, when they made the great run, the place was hopping when they beat Atlanta and it got to the world series. And of course we all know about 84, I have to see that city on a day-in, day-out basis really be involved in putting 35, 30, 35,000 in that ballpark when fans are allowed back in. I have to see that to measure the passion level of the Southern California Padre baseball fan. In other words, they're just, when the Dodgers come to town, I don't want to see 10,000 Dodger fans in the stadium. So that's when I'm going to take San Diego really seriously as a big-time baseball town, Tatis or no Tatis. What's your take on that for a sec? Go ahead. I, I think that's a fair bar for you to hold up. And I think to me, there's no question that it's going to happen. If this were a normal year and if there were no pandemic and, and if everybody could get in you know, from the get-go, I have no doubt in my mind this would be a three million year in terms of attendance. Uh, like I said, the, the love affair between the, the fans and Fernando and just sort of the sense of like, okay, this organization is operating the way we've always wanted it to and the way it really hasn't for much, if not all of its history. Like this is what the fans have been clamoring for. You mentioned no football team in town. This is it. Everybody is here. Everybody is all in. And even when the Padres weren't good, even when they didn't deserve your money at the ticket window, this was still always a great baseball town. Everybody plays baseball here. Everybody knows baseball here. It is a great baseball market. It's a great baseball city. City. It's a great baseball community. It just hasn't had a great baseball franchise representing it at all times. And they've supported this team arguably more than they should have over a lot of the course of the history from 1969 until now. But, but at this moment, everything is coming together in a really, really good way. You'll see those attendance numbers, I promise. All right, that's number one. Number two, let's talk about the team for a second. I always, I mean, they are really everybody's favorite flavor right now. I mean, they're the MLB.com put them as the second best team in a sport. You can't do that. Uh, Vegas has got them at 94 and a half wins over under. That seems awfully high for me. You know, they, they have a big, you know, they're going to have a lot of expectations. They're going to have a big piano on their back. 
I got to go out there and see them respond now and play with a little pressure on them. The Dodgers have to deal with that. The Yankees have to deal with that. The real good team year in and year out have to deal with that. Let me see the Padres deal where, you know, when I have a four-game losing streak, people are going to start screaming and yelling, what's up with the Padres? And that's a different mindset for a young team and a young manager. Let me get your sense on that for a sec. Go ahead. No, there's no question. And you're absolutely right. And and look, am I worried about them being able to handle that? I'm not. I, I think they have the talent. I think they have the even-headedness. I think they have the leadership both in the manager's office and in the clubhouse to be able to handle those kinds of things. But you're right. I mean, that's something most of these guys or a lot of these guys haven't ever had to deal with before. And, and Jay Singler, the manager, addressing his full squad today for the first time, did tell us this morning that, yeah, a big part of that conversation is going to be about managing expectations and kind of taking care of ourselves and blocking out the outside noise. And and is there going to be some learning on the fly that has to take place? Of course, there always is with that kind of thing. Uh, but you've got Eric Hosmer in that clubhouse. You've got Manny Machado in that clubhouse. You've got Jace Tingler, who everybody in that room really seems to respect and appreciate. Um, will it be different? For sure. Is it a, a completely uh, unique circumstance in Padre history? Maybe it is. Uh, but, but again, I, I think they're very well prepared to handle all that. But like you said, it will be different this year and in a very good way. Very good job, Jess. Congratulations to you, too. You enjoy it. It's a great ride for you. Thanks for a few minutes. Appreciate you coming on today.